Jan Pospisil, who's the head of research at the Austrian Study Center for Peace and Conflict Resolution. Jan, welcome to the program. Um, when trying to make a determination about the overall contribution and whether it's negative or positive of UN peacekeepers, what occurs to me is that every time I've heard an instant, uh, instance of criticism of UN peacekeepers, I could equally point to an instance where they've been victims, because obviously they're there in a country because there's some kind of security issue, and quite often a peacekeeper will pay with their life. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the problem is often, and this is when it comes to, to devaluation and also like the public perception of, of, of UN peacekeeping missions, that the mandate is often quite broad under very challenging circumstances, like especially the protection of civilians mandate which is now basically in all the mandates of the, of the ongoing peacekeeping missions. And this often means that you have like uh, eight to 10,000 armed personnel often in, in regions that are huge, vast, logistically highly challenging. And of course they are completely overmatched. Any army would be overmatched to protect civilians properly in these kinds of environments with eight or 10,000 force. Jan, um, in terms of their reputation, there were really two big instances in the past maybe 20 years or so. There was after the UN peacekeeping mission went to Haiti after the earthquake. And we heard in that report about them being accused of abusing Haitian citizens, but they also brought cholera into Haiti. Haiti was cholera free until UN peacekeepers arrived there. And then we had the Srebrenica massacre. And we've just had the 27th anniversary of it. And of course it's famous for the UN peacekeepers. There was the Dutch contingent there and they've since apologized for not preventing that massacre of those thousands of Muslim men and boys. And how does a mission recover from those kind of mistakes? I mean, these two missions haven't really recovered from these mistakes. Uh, they're very different circumstances though. And I mean, in, 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 in what happened in Haiti, in partly in Car, you have to take into account that, I mean, this is regular troops often in, in coming over. Um, with lots of soldiers in, in turnover, so you cannot scrutinize 100% what is going on. You can basically do the best possible. You can have good force commanders in place, good chain of command, but the problem remains still that there is always something like a double mandating in place. You have the mandate by the mission. You have uh, the, the, the military requirements on the ground. You have the force commander, um, but you have also the interest of the troop contributing countries and often they also are very clear what their soldiers should do, could do, and also could not do and should not do and when it comes to more dangerous missions. So this is something um, that has to be taken into account. And this was one of the problems in, in, in Bosnia. And I suppose there's also an issue that even before they arrive, they have to be invited, the peacekeepers, correct? They can't just enter a country by anybody else's permission, except that nation state. So is that already an admission that even before they arrive, the country can't control the security in its own territory? Well, this is, this is recently, especially in Mali now, one of the big, big debates. I mean, of course, you need a Security Council mandate, which is often difficult enough, especially now with Russia playing a special part in the Security Council. And then you need a, a status of forces agreement in place, the so-called SOFA, which basically in detail regulates what peacekeeping missions can do and con cannot do. Um, countries are often quite, quite keen to show that, okay, there is a problem in a certain area and then prevent uh, peacekeeping missions to enter other areas. This is one of the, one of the things like now in Mali, where the Mali, uh, military regime tries to prevent the, the movement of the peacekeeping mission um, when it comes to human rights abuses. So human rights um, um, allegations or investigations should not allow, according to the Mali regime, the UN peacekeeping mission to move to all parts of the country. So they try to restrict movement based on that. And it was also the end of UNAMIT, the, the poor mission um, on request by the Sudanese uh, government that they wanted to, to present the picture that the situation there is under control. Jan Pospisil, thank you so much for the analysis, Jan. Take care.